hemophilia A versus B. So the way I used to remember it in med school was hemophilia 8, spell 8 with an A, so A-I-G-H-T, for hemophilia A is factor 8. And for uh, hemophilia B, it's hemophilia B9, not that it's benign, but B9 made me realize that hemophilia B was factor 9. But for nursing considerations, we've got to realize that we've got to do bleeding precautions. Bleeding precautions show up everywhere. So what are some bleeding precautions? Soft bristle toothbrush, um, electric razor, night lights, no slippery rugs, wearing a medical ID tag, um, no NSAIDs. So all these are bleeding precautions, but look at where we see them. We see them in hematology here in hemophilia. We'll see them with warfarin, heparin, apixaban, rivaroxaban. When we're anticoagulating them, stent placements with platelets, uh, antiplatelets and aspirin. So bleeding precautions, super, super high yield. But what if we've got a patient that's got hemophilia A or B and now they're bleeding? It is one of ASK graph. It is hemorrhaging because they're not going to be able to clot. They're missing one of those factors. So when we don't have clotting factors, they bleed out. But where do they bleed? They bleed into the joint spaces. What is that called? Hemarthrosis. So look for that word hemarthrosis or bleeding into the joint space. And that means that they are actively hemorrhaging. So what do we do about it? Well, we give them what they don't have. Give them clotting factors and make sure that we're not giving them NSAIDs so we're using ice, we're using compression, and we're, we're continuing to educate them on their bleeding precautions, give them knee pads, helmets, and things of that nature, because these kids, well, they'll be kids, and they're probably going to run into things. So that's hemophilia A and B.